Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this amazing video. I am Aditya. In this video, we will see how to create an HTML input box without using HTML input element. <laughs> so we will be creating a normal input box but without any, any HTML input element, we will be using the HTML div tag and the p tag. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, before that, I want to apologize that I wasn't able to create any video for almost a month. The reason being I was busy working with my team on this project so we have created an e-commerce API which is currently the beta stage so it's a headless e-commerce CMS where you can create your e-commerce store uh, very easily and it has also good multi vendor support actually I'm so current in parallel actually with this I'm also working on a Next.js series so I'll be using Next.js using this API is creating an e-commerce store using a headless e-commerce store actually so do uh, stay tuned like I'll be publishing the series soon because I'm almost midway with in that so so sorry again if, uh, it's taking a bit long than expected now yesterday I was just looking into slack uh, on the message and I was a bit curious like how is that input box like how is it working so I just right click on it to see inspect element and all those things and to my surprise it wasn't the input element it was just the p tag and a div tag wrapping it up so I know you might see like <laughs> what is this foolish person like noticing after so long <laughs> but trust me guys there are, I just discovered it yesterday and also for some other things like even messenger or LinkedIn they don't use input box like input element they have their own input box created so I was a bit curious and I was curious to try this out with view because Vue has like amazing uh, system of V model and all those things, so it would be more easy actually in Vue as well. I'm pretty much sure it's easy in React. So after trying it out, I was like, okay, this is worth the video. <laughs> Let's begin how it works. So first we have a router. So this is our Vue shopping cart project. So if you haven't checked that video, please do check that video as well. I'll be pushing this code again on GitHub once this is done. So we have a route defined here, which is input, but not input, which is pointing towards the editable input component. Inside that editable input component, we have a simple input box, which is binding a V model uh, value, which is just this text variable over here. Uh, using setup TypeScript, we are just have a simple script tag over here. Then a component input box component being lazy loaded. We have a placeholder prop over there. Like these two, these two actually, actually this is also it's going to be a prop. And whatever text we type, it's going to get displayed. On the input box side, we have a div tag over here, and we have a p tag over here. And <laughs> well, this is the twist over here. Actually, that this is this is the main thing. This content editable property of HTML, which makes any element, any HTML element, or rather most of the HTML element, editable. So that's there. Then we have a prop for placeholder. I'll get back to this model value and this events. How to work on that? Then we have a text box variable, which is just referring to this p tag. So we have just that HTML paragraph element. Then two functions. One function makes the p tag or that input box editable the other function makes it normal now you will see here i have a binded class which is once it is editable we have a ring around the p tag once it is not editable we have we remove that ring and we only put the border so that's all we have so far now let's give it a try and see how it looks like so if i go back again over here it looks pretty simple and if i click on it you will see that box goes but if I click again, that box comes again. So the thing is, we don't want to do a double click. And also there is an outline over around that P tag. So let's put over here, outline as none, line none. Oops, the error is here. We just put hyphen like this. Then let's give it a try. And there it is, the outline is not there. So if I click again, and yeah, that's what we want. Now, the thing here is that I have to do a double click and we don't want that like with just one click we click on it something like this and we have a focus but if I do if I show you guys again like I have to do it a double click so make it working and do all my typing over here so what I'm a good what I'm gonna do here is first I'll also give some padding over here so let's give p of 4 along with that what I'm gonna do is here once we make it editable I'm gonna make this thing focused okay so what how can how can we do that i'm going to say text box dot value and then question mark focus okay so now if we go back again over here and 
refresh the page you will see it still doesn't work the reason being this thing is setting it as true and there is no more time like there is hardly any time for this to work like it's happening like in a very fraction of a fraction of a second so we just need a set timeout to have a delay kind of thing so here I'm gonna say set timeout and that timeout will be for let's say 100 sec 100 millisecond and then we can put this inside this over here and also I'll remove this question mark it's not it's not gonna make any difference I'm just gonna make it typed something like HTML paragraph element and that's it so if I go back over here now now if I refresh the page if you see one click and there it is just in one click and then we can type what we want now we are typing it but it is not reflected in the text here so if I go back over here in our editable input uh, main page over here and if I say text and if I just go back over in here so if I type anything it's not reflected here so let's make it like working so if I even I type again nothing nothing happens so now how to bind it with V model now the good thing here is this content editable once it becomes editable you can consider it acts like an input okay so we can have how we put V model on a component we can put it on our P tag so what we are going to do is first we will have a model value as a prop and an uh, emit event which is update model value like behind the scene it is working like this so here we have at the rate update then model value that's the event that's going to get called and some function which will set or bind the value of this text that's what we have to do the same thing like anything like it, this exactly the same thing that we do for normal input HTML element we just have over here at the rate input equal to then we emit the event so this is our event that we want to emit so from here I'm gonna copy from here and paste it over here which should be in single code because I'm using double quote outside and what value to pass so that would be event dot target dot now this is the twist here so if you pass the value now as even though it's a content editable HTML element <laughs> it's not actually an input HTML element though it's behave like an HTML input element okay this is confusing so in reality it is just acting as an input HTML element but it is not exactly an input HTML element so here instead of passing the value we need to pass the inner text okay now once we pass that we need to bind the value as well so here I'm gonna say value model value should be with props because we are having uh, props over here and I guess this should be good and then okay we are making it editable so let's see how it works so if I go back over here now if I just give it a try and you will see whatever we type it is being getting typed over here now let's see if whatever we copy paste if does that work over here as well so what I'm gonna do is I'll just copy this entire script from here and let's just paste it over there like this and there we go so it has pasted exactly as a snapshot and you'll see like there is some text pasted over here as well so if I just paste it like uh, just paste as a plain text then you'll see it has it has gone overflown so we need to also add the property of overflow auto or scroll something like that so here I'm gonna say if get if it gets overflow then we just need to do it auto like this and then you will see that this is our text that is being copy pasted and this is it's the same over here so it kind of binds properly okay now next thing is we binded it that's great but what we want is we also want that once someone click on this so if there is nothing here it shows you know, edit this text or enter your text here something like that just a placeholder so we need to display the placeholder here so if I go back over here I just noticed that focus is not working for some reason so let's get back over here so we have the focus we are focusing it over here Okay, the reason it is not working because this overflow we need to add it on a p tag not on the div tag so then it should work so if I go back over here and refresh it and give it a try and there you go okay 
all back to normal again <laughs> so that's great now next thing is we want to include that placeholder as well like we need something over there before we like put something <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bind with V text over here and I'm gonna say that will be our input text okay so if I go back over here so you'll see we have the placeholder over here so whatever placeholder we have now once I click on this I want to remove this placeholder and if I don't type anything then I want to keep the placeholder but if I type anything I want to keep the typed value so how to do that well in that case what we need to do here is first in our make editable we need to first have like we need to check the input text value so or set the input text value here so we are gonna say okay if user has included or in entered any model value then just keep that model value else just keep it blank okay on the other hand when it is normal so in that case what we want to do is we want to say input dot text dot value equal to now when the user has in uh, input any model value or on the other hand if the user has not inputted any model value if it is just blank then in that case just keep the value as the placeholder else keep the value as the model value okay now that's what we have over here now next thing we need to do is we are making it editable but we are not making it normal so for that here I'm gonna say so there is click to make it editable now there is something which is on blur that means you click somewhere outside at that time we will make it normal okay there we go so let's give it a try let's refresh this so here okay text gone Aditya is typing let's take it out and there it is so now this is uh, still there everything is still there so but we want that uh, editable is not going there okay so I guess the blur should go over here on this one so that uh, yeah should go on this one on the p tag so if we now just give it a try again so let's say typing ta -ta -ta -ta, take it out and there we go so the border box comes back again and everything works fine so this is how you could create an input box using simple HTML elements and making them content editable. Of course, you can have a send button over here. And then once you click on it, the value goes because we already have a value now. So we can use it however we like. We can use it to pass it to the server or to do some text cleaning. But tips I would like to give here is if currently we are doing inner text over here. Okay. And also we are binding the text. We are not putting the HTML because if we put the HTML there is a possibility of XSS attack so in that case what we need to make sure is we need to make sure that we are cleaning the HTML when someone input it and when some when you're sending it to the server so that's enough so personally I'm not sure like why we are using <laughs> HTML element as editable rather than input box the only purpose I could see is maybe they want to use it for emoji or maybe something else but let me know in the comment section what do you guys think of this approach using html elements over the input element for text box or the input box so thanks again for watching this video if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel if, if you feel this video is worth a like please hit the thumbs up button and if you feel this video is worth a share then please do share with your network so thank you again see you in the next video till the next time goodbye